Hey guys, Steve Fortner here, Hobo with Wood, coming at you again. Today we're going to talk about using the QR code generator built into Lightburn. And we're going to make a gag gift or a, a gag business card, uh, a joke card, burning uh, this QR code onto one of the metal business cards that's available through Xtools website in their materials setting, their material listings. So let's jump in here to light burn without any hesitation. And what we have is in our tools selection. So go up here to our tools and you'll find your create QR code generator. Tools and create QR code. Click on it and initially it looks like well, nothing's happening. If you wait, you can wait till Christmas and it ain't gonna matter. Down here, it gave you a set of instructions that you may not have saw pop up. Click and drag to create and size a new QR code. So it's waiting for you to draw the box for the QR code. So you just click and start drawing. Now, QR codes are in the formation of a square, and it's going to maintain that square aspect ratio, and you can draw it as big as you want, as small as you want, It's and in release, and it's going to populate this menu right here. Now this shows you you have three tabs, three options to create this QR code. You can type in raw content. You can just get up to 2,000 characters, anything you want to. If you want it to be the first paragraph of Moby Dick, you can put that in here if it's under 2,000 characters. Or if you use variable text uh, or CSV files, you can click here and opt to put in those that information there, those those commands or those files. And that will generate the QR code using variable text merged and or CSV. But if you don't want to put in just raw content, you just want to put in a Wi-Fi gateway, put in your SSID and your password. Or if you want to generate a true business card, you have the opp opportunity to put in First name, last name, addresses, phone numbers, a note field, the email, and your URL. Now you cannot use one more than one. You're going to use one or the other of these three tabs. And as you begin to do that, as you begin to enter information of raw content, you will notice over here the QR code will begin to populate and generate as you type. So you scan that right now, it's going to just say hobo. But we're going to make our gag or our joke card. And in order to do that, I'm going to come over here to my contact. I'm not going to, uh, you guys have filled out forms before. You know how those work. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to come down here to my note field. And I'm going to type in error 404. Please try again. Again, this is just for our joke card. All right, so that will be that same message. Now, that would be in a fill mode, like so. And right now you can see the Vegas lights or our chase lights going around that showing that it's still selected. And you still have the command down here to click and drag to create a QR code. So you can start drawing more codes but you don't need to do that. But to get out of that, you just simply come up here, hit your select tool. Now it's showing you, you have that QR code selected, get away from it and there you have a scannable QR code. Now this is a done in a vector file. So if you select it and come down here to your corners and start shrinking, you can make this any size you need it to be. We need to get it down to our business card size. You can also squish it, stretch it, but I don't know if that and how that's going to affect the ability for it to scan QR codes. I'm keeping her, everyone I've seen are always perfectly square. So we're going to keep her square. Now we're going to use one of these business cards that came with my X tool. You can find these on X tools website at their, in their uh, materials section. Uh, you come under store and metal. 
that'll show you all the different metal things that they have to use with your X tool and or your laser. If you're not using X tools, this will work on any of the diodes. Uh, we've got them in multiple colors and uh, they're all the same size, however. So we'll just look here, click on any of them to get our dimensions. Uh, so here we got a business card's 3.38 inches and 2.12 inches. And if we come back over here, we're going to scan out, scan out a little bit. And we need to draw our business card size. So we'll put this on a different layer and put it in line mode. Now we need to get our dimensions correct. So select and 3.38 tab. Oh, all right, I was in millimeters, not inches, but I'm gonna show you guys a shortcut that you may have not known. Without having to undo or go out, if you just go back up there and put in the quotes, it's gonna convert that to inches. Without having to undo, change that. Lightburn recognizes that command. It knows it's in millimeters, but if you give it a single quote, which is your you know, your inches, or what was the other dimension? 3.38 and 212. All right, so here, oh, come on. We go 2.12. We're still in millimeters, but if you put in letters, I N, for inches. It convert, notices that or recognizes that and converts it to inches. So there is our business card size. If we click on the millimeters, you can see it's 3.38 by 212. Now, our business card has some rounded edges, and we're going to do that in Lightburn. Now, you can do that a couple of ways. You can come here, select your tool, come down here and use the radius tool and put in your value. But if you haven't gotten familiar with and comfortable with using radius and, and you've had difficulty using it, if you right click, show properties that will bring up your shape properties menu over here and it's telling you and here you can change and edit your your dimensions but also here's your corner radius and why i like using this is because it will show you in real time what your radius is so i'm going to zoom in closer to that image and as you as you change that, there's zero, you increase your radius, you can see your radius changing on your card. And it's not fixed until you tell it, and I'm gonna come out of here and go to three, I like that. All right, now, that's still changing editable, editable, but we're now selecting, that's done, and I'm gonna close my shape properties because I don't keep that open. But now we have that dimensions with a radius, we just need to bring in our QR code and bring her down to size. Holding the control button will shrink it from the middle. And I want this to be a little larger. This is just going to be a joke card. Uh, come in here, text. How to keep a, actually, I'm going to do this on different text lines because I want to center them and edit them separately. Uh, how to keep a monkey. Busy. No. All right, so I've got generated three different texts, and those are not organized, but we're going to select, select, and select, and we're going to align these. And now we're going to 
work out our spacing. Okay, I'm going to do this on one side of the card. So let's group all of this and make sure everything is centered. All right, now that is in the center of our card and we just gotta set our power and speed information in and send it to the computer. Now, where do we get that information on our how to engrave that business card? You come back over here to Xtool, material settings, yes, yeah, so support, material settings. Now you have all of these medias to choose from and get settings for your X tool or your laser box. You can probably try these on your any other diode, but we're going to use metal and let's scroll down here and take a look. And this is their business cards. So we're doing a, a metal business card. We're doing a vector engrave and I'm not using the five watt. I'm using the 10 watt. So metal business card, vector engraved, the D110 watt, they're recommending 100% power at eight millimeters a second and a single pass. So 108 and a single pass. So we come back over here and we go to our cuts and layers. And that was eight millimeters a second, 100% power, and it was a single pass. And I could have just kept that open. Single pass. And lastly, we don't even need this line here. This could be, in fact, I'm just going to put it on a tool line. Tool path. There we go. I can use that now for framing purposes. So now that is ready to engrave. So let me go set up our laser bed and we'll send this to the laser actually before we go to the laser something you should do is always check your work before you go and burn now how do you check your qr code well you can do your preview to see how it's going to print out in fact i'm probably going to change that font uh but take your phone out turn your camera on and see if that QR worked. All right, now that QR worked for me, and I did notice an error that I need to go back and fix. Come here, and I've got those groups. We're going to ungroup them. Select just your QR code. Right click, edit QR code. I misspelled again. Had I not gone in and checked that, I might not have called it. So use your camera, scan your QR code, verify all the information populates correctly before you engrave or burn. All right, now we're ready to set up the laser and send the file. Okay, while we're waiting for this to burn, I just wanna take a second and remind you, I have a poll on Facebook for you to vote on my haircut. There are some stipulations on when I get it cut, how I get it cut, but you get to decide if we hit 1,000 subscribers before Halloween. So let me show you. I'll put a link down below for the poll. Uh, but the poll is, I created it on July 31st this year. So I'm looking to have 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel before October 31st, 2022. At that time, I was currently at 120 subscribers. Half of those were in 28 days. So I got about 60 in 28 days. So at that current growth rate, it doesn't seem feasible. 
that would be somewhere around 300 subscribers. So I've decided to put an incentive out there to help encourage others to sign up. I need a haircut now. I desperately need a haircut, but I'll wait until the end of October unless I get there before then, and I'll let you determine the haircut I get. You can vote for your choice of cut, but I only go through with your choice if I hit 1,000 subscribers by Halloween 2023. And the choices I have in the poll are a nice professional haircut, which 33% of you out of six have voted for, shaved completely bald, zero votes, business in the front, party in the back, think Joe Dirt, cul-de-sac. I'll shave the complete center of my head, leaving the sides of this long, like you trying to get that comb over going on. And then lastly, on the winning vote so far is the GI flat top. We'll go state trooper. So click on the link and vote, and let's get back to this business card. All right, a 30 minute burn for one business card. Yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> and that's just one side. I'm gonna flip it over and do uh, my actual contact information on the back side. I'm gonna wipe this up a little bit and see if it cleans up any. So here's the front of the card that I've designed and burned. And uh, it turned out nice. Now there is some distortion in that last millimeter or so of that QR code. And that distortion came from the fact that the card was slightly warped from whenever it was engraved the first time. The amount of heat that went into that card in order to create the image warped that metal card just a wee bit. And enough so that when I went to burn the second engraving, we had a distortion. See, we have no distortion there. Nice and clean. And so I would maybe think twice about doing a second burn on the back. Thanks for hanging around and watching this video. I hope you've learned a little something about the QR code ability in Lightburn. Uh, they're, they're neat. They're fun. Uh, you don't have, they're not limited to just the metal business cards. You can engrave those QR codes. Uh, you're going to need to do it on a nice, clean burn uh, using some techniques with a, uh, a double hatch and uh, uh, probably a line after fill and even the flood fill. Get that thing really crisp and clean. And a wood engraving with the QR code is going to work out just fine too. So thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. And if you have time, log in and vote for that haircut. Uh, and guys, don't be afraid to vote for a shaved head. I'm not, I'm not scared. <laughs> so thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video.